It's the most wonderful time of the year. We all gather around the fire and wait for a geriatric bearded man in a red and white suit to drop in on us and trip out on mushrooms. At least that is one interpretation of the infamous Santa Claus story, and there are several. In this video, we're not likely gonna solve once and for all the true origin of Santa Claus, but we did wanna go over the very real possibility that Santa Claus, or the most famous jolly man in the world, might be based off of the most famous mushroom in the world, the Amanita muscaria mushroom. The possibility that Santa Claus is based off a mushroom is a super fun idea to think about, not only because it involves such a cool mushroom, but also because it sheds some light on some very strange habits of Santa that we don't really question much as a kid. For example, why on earth would we leave food out for the guy? And why are the colors of Christmas red and white and not based on something like, I don't know, magenta and purple and mustard? We all know and love Santa Claus. I mean, come on, his fashion sense is definitely superior to any of the other holiday idols. He got the hat, the red coat, the boots. I mean, come on, the Easter Bunny has nothing on this guy. But where did he get this red and white inspiration from? Well, when we look out in nature, one of the reddest and whitest things that we see is the Amanita muscaria mushroom. It has this bright red cap with these white dots on top, but it's a naturally very Christmassy looking mushroom. And Amanita muscaria doesn't grow in isolation. It's a mycorrhizal mushroom, which means it grows in symbiosis with other trees, specifically pine trees like this Christmas tree, for example, and it can easily be spotted under the tree while out foraging. This also leads into the fact that this could be why we have this tradition of putting presents, i.e. the mushroom, under the tree. This also hints at the idea that this trio of colors, like the green and the red and the white, is why we have that as our Christmas color scheme. But to really understand why some historians think that we honor the Amanita muscaria mushroom during the winter holidays, we have to go back, way back. Because this checkered mushroom has an equally checkered past. Indigenous populations of people in places all over the world have historically used psychologically spicy mushrooms in ceremonial ways, usually to resolve psychological, spiritual, community and all sorts of other issues. There are many species of mushroom that do have psychoactive properties and Amanita muscaria, although different from the traditional magic mushroom or psilocybin containing mushrooms, Amanita muscaria does have psychoactive properties. It is known that historically people of Lapland, which is the northernmost part of Finland and people in Siberia have used this mushroom in healing ceremonies. Although not exclusively, these healing ceremonies would often happen in the middle of winter. So around the winter solstice, around late December obviously coincides with when we celebrate Christmas. During these ceremonies there were the designated users or the shamans who would be the ones who take these psychoactive mushrooms and travel to the spirit world. So the shaman had so much reverence for this Amanita muscaria mushroom that they would actually dress up like the mushroom. So they would wear red furs and they would wear white and it would look like a big red Santa suit, essentially. And then during the winter solstice, they would, as the story goes, you know, tromp through the snow and go visit people that were living in these huts. And they were kind of like yurts, as you can imagine. And the yurts have a fire in the middle, so they have a big hole at the top. And the yurts would be packed with snow, so the shaman couldn't get through the front door, climb in through the roof, and drop in through the chimney, which is maybe representative of why Santa comes in through the chimney. I've heard one theory too, where once Santa or the shaman comes in the chimney, he distributes the Amanita muscaria mushroom to the other people that are in the hut, which is kind of like handing out presents. But I've also heard that, you know, it's only the shaman that uses the mushroom. So I'm not really sure exactly where that connection is. Either way, it's just interesting to think that why does Santa come down the chimney and give out presents? And maybe it could be related to how the shaman climbed up on the huts and came in through the hole, whether that's true or not. But there is a lot of other connections one of which is elves. So after the shaman would consume the mushrooms, they would take a jaunt into the underworld where they would obviously come in contact with different spirits or entities, which might be interpreted as being elves. These elves or spirits or entities or whatever you want to call it can be seen as helpers that would help guide the shaman towards spiritual insights. But I don't know, can you imagine eating a psychedelic mushroom for spiritual insights and immediately seeing this? So on the one hand, people thought, you know, Santa or the shaman consumed the mushrooms and then brought the presents or the gifts of spiritual insights. And on the other hand, it could also be interpreted that the shaman actually distributed the mushroom themselves and allowed other people to get those gifts or spiritual insights. But either way you look at it, there's some pretty interesting connections. There are a couple of other pretty interesting connections here as well. And one of them is why do we decorate trees or hang different ornaments in the trees? And one of the theories is when you harvest the Amanita muscaria mushroom, which actually grows in the summer, 
and you want it to be dry in the winter, you would hang it in the tree so that it could dry and you could preserve it. And another way to actually preserve this mushroom would be to hang it in some stockings by a fire, which is also something that we really closely associate with Christmas. Another icon of the season and something we often associate with Christmas is obviously the reindeer. And not only are they common across the north and Siberia, but they are also the magical creature that helps Santa traverse space and time. It is commonly reported and confirmed that reindeer actually do consume Amanita muscaria, which kind of makes sense because how else would you convince a bunch of animals to pull around a fairly rotund guy on a giant sled? Fun fact, reindeer are actually not the only animals that consume psychoactive plants or mushrooms. For example, dolphins will eat pufferfish that have brain-altering toxins. Dogs will apparently sometimes lick mind-altering toads, although that could be accidental because dogs lick anything. But you know, cats love catnip, and it's also been reported that goats will look for mushrooms or psychoactive mushrooms to munch on. Of course, we all know too, the origin of coffee is goats eating the coffee bean, which is also psychoactive. So, you know, animals like to do it too. Amanita muscaria is a psychoactive mushroom, yes, but it's also considered a poisonous mushroom depending on how it's prepared because it does contain compounds that are poisonous and even neurotoxic. So with Amanita muscaria being poisonous, again, depending on how you prepare it, it can be hard to consume them without feeling the negative effects. But there are some interesting ways that people used to get around this. The specific psychoactive compounds in Amanita muscaria have a unique property in which they can pass through the endocrine system of animals completely unscathed. This suggests that you might want to indulge in yellow snow every once in a while if you wanted to commune with the spirit realm. In other words, the reindeer would eat the mushrooms and then people would collect the urine and be able to consume that and get the psychoactive effects without the negative effects. And there's also the reverse concept where people would eat the mushrooms and then the reindeer would eat the people pee. That, my friends, is what we call symbiosis. What a beautiful world we live in. All this is to say that the connection between Santa's sleigh and reindeer flying through the cosmos can be interpreted in a few different ways. So there you have it. I mean, there's just so many connections, right? We have the red and white of the mushroom and the red and white of Santa Claus. We have the shamans coming down the chimney and distributing gifts. We have mushrooms hanging in the tree and maybe as a stocking. We have mushrooms as maybe even a present under the tree. We also have the reindeer eating the mushroom and flying through the sky. So, so there's so many of these interesting connections that maybe now you'll think Santa isn't only a jolly guy, he is also potentially a fun guy. We can't forget that this is just one theory or one fun idea really is a better way to put it because there are a lot of other uh, theories and a lot of other origin stories about Santa Claus and the motifs of Christmas and how they came about. And obviously I'm not a historian, we're not archaeologists, so there's plenty of people out there that will probably disagree with this whole Santa theory, but you can't disagree that it's pretty fun to think about all these connections and how it all comes back to Amanita muscaria mushroom. So I'd love to know what you think. You think this theory is crazy or you think this theory is super cool? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tony from FreshCap.com and we'll see you in the next video. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.